I should. I don't deserve all of his good. So many things are not as they should be. I should and I don't deserve all of his good so many things are not are not as they should be but So good to me. I come short so many times, and evil thoughts come into my mind. I know. me God is so good to me I don't deserve all of this good should I'm not worthy I'm not worthy of all of your good so many things are not are not as they should be oh but I'm so glad that God is and I thank him for being so good to me. Oh,
Hallelujah. Do you thank God for being so good to you? We serve a gracious God this morning, and as Sister Williams was singing, it took me back to Sunday school this morning where Isaiah said he wasn't worthy. He said he was a man of unclean lips. And not only that he said that he was a man of unclean lips, he said all of those that are around me are, what, have unclean lips, amen. So what he was saying is that all of us need God in our lives. That God, first of all, that we might acknowledge him, that we might go to him and repent to him, that he might save us, amen. But we thank God, he is so good to us. Thank God for our musicians, our praise team, our media, those who have joined us here this morning, our ushers, we do thank God. We find ourselves in the book of Revelation this morning Thank God for how he continues to bless us in spite of ourselves. Amen. I thank God for family leading us in prayer and this morning. And prayer, 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 prayer. Prayer helps. Yes, it does. Amen. Amen. And but we thank God this morning as we're going through the things of life, this life. We thank God for prayer. Amen. Amen. Revelation chapter 7 this morning. To those who on the sanctuary, those who are online this morning, as we continue to worship God in spirit and in truth. And Revelation chapter number seven, verse nine. After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Just for a few moments this morning, no man could number. The title of the book of Revelation comes from the Greek word for apocalypse, which means an unveiling or a disclosure of something that has not happened as of yet. The book of Revelation provides the clearest biblical portrait of future events concerning the tribulation, chapters 4 through 18. The tribulation will be a time of judgment and a time when those who left here on earth after the rapture will suffer deeply for their unbelief. This prophecy pictures judgment as a series of a 21 event starting with the breaking of the seven seals, the blowing of the seven trumpets, and the pouring out of the seven bowls. The author mentions his name four times throughout this great prophecy. In chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 4, and 9, and chapter 22, verse 8. It was written while being on the island of Patmos. Many scholars have given an almost unanimously affirmation identifying John the Apostle as the author. One of the things this book teaches us is that we have to be in the Spirit. John said that I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. The Spirit was speaking to him, showing him of the things in which was going to take place. This book of prophecy reveals God's plan for the end of this present age and the establishment of his kingdom, the new Jerusalem. Divided into three main sections, the book of Revelation is an apoc apocalyptic letter that contains the visions to the end of the world and the second coming of uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The book consists of the three letters written to the seven churches of Asia Minor, the visions of heaven and earth, and the prophecies of the end times. John uses visions, images, symbols, and Old Testament allusions that warns the dangers of sin and evil and encourage the faithful to resist and to overcome them. 
He said on last week, we were talking about the Spirit of God that lives on the inside of us. He's the one that empowers us to will and to do of God's good pleasure. But the book of Revelation uses the number seven repeatedly and depicts events such as the mark of the beast, the battle of Armageddon, the binding of the devil, the rule of the Lord, the great white throne judgment, and the new Jerusalem. God has taken us somewhere, amen? But Christians are encouraged to remain faithful to God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to resist the powers of evil, realizing God will prevail and bring salvation. I'm talking about no man in number. The Bible teaches us in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14. It says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto the, all nations, and to them, shall, and then, brother, shall the end come. Oftentimes I hear, Sam, what this world coming to? I say it's coming to an end. The Bible is teaching us that the things in which we see each and every day, the Bible speaks of eternity. But don't you know that some scholars believe that Revelation 7 parallels Matthew 24, 14? And many of, of them agrees that the 144,000 Jews will be witnesses for Christ and Gentiles we will be saved through their ministry during the time of tribulation. Don't you know tribulation times are coming? If we believe the Bible, the things in which the Bible says they're going to happen, they're happening, whether we believe it or not. Whether you believe that Christ is coming back or not, he's coming. The Jews were sealed, verses 1 through 8, chapter 7. And the Gentiles are saved, verses 9 through 17. Revelation chapter 7 shows the security and salvation of God's people in times of judgment and calamity. See, some folk believe that it's hell right now. I have to take your word for it. I don't know, I'm not going to know, because I'm, as the Bible teaches us, those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ, we're not going to what? We're not going to experience the days of tribulation, nor are we going to experience the lake of fire. But John, he's writing to remind us, to teach us, to show us that there is something that's on the horizon. He tells us in chapter 7, it describes the vision of the four angels, how they're holding back the winds and the wrath of God until the sealing of the 144,000 representatives from the 12 tribes of Israel. It speaks of a great multitude of people being saved out of the great tribulation and worship God and the Lamb. For chronologically, our lesson is between the sixth and the seventh seal before the seven trumpets. We go back to chapter six, we'll find the first beast talking about a white horse, the one that sat on him. He was coming to conquer, but it also says that he's come in the midst of that to change his mind. Meaning, Christ said that there were going to be some antichrist. I know we're talking about the white horse and the one that's sitting on him. I know many of us think that it might be Christ. But if he says that, you know, there are false Christ coming, we know that what? He's going to show up. Then it moves from the white horse to the black horse. A time of pestilence. 
time of famine. It moves to the red horse, a time of death. What I'm trying to say is John is disclosing some things that are going to happen. But in our lesson today, he, he's telling the, what, the angel to hold back the destruction. This world is going to be destroyed. That's what the Bible is teaching you and I this morning. But as I go to my seat this morning, it, it says that when he opened the second seal, the red horse... The power had to be given to him to take peace from the earth. What I'm trying to say is, is that when we look at the things that are going on, it's not the tribulation, but there's a lot of chaos going on. But I want to let everybody know this morning that as the Bible is teaching you and I, as we look at what God is saying to us through his scripture. Revelation chapter 7 verse 1 says, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor any tree. He says, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. He says, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Don't you know that God is holding back some things from us? The trials and the tribulations of life. There's a lot of things that are going on around us. And when you get a chance, go back and look at those, 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 those seals, one through five, and look at six and seven as, as God is ministering to us about the times that, that are going to come in the midst of the lives of God's people. But he says here in verse number three, he says, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And the Bible says in verse 4, And I heard the number of which them were sealed, and were sealed a hundred and forty-four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Throughout biblical history, the Bible reminds us that God is not going to forget about his people. Uh, when I was studying this lesson, I got a better view and understanding of the 144,000. I know some religious beliefs is, is that Jesus is coming back only for 144,000 people. The last time I checked the big house over there in Michigan, it holds over 100,000. So you're trying to tell me that God is only coming back for a stadium and those who might be working it and those who might be tailgating out in the parking lots. But I learned to understand that it was talking about those who are going to be witnesses for Jesus Christ during the time of tribulation. Uh, see, God has a ram in the bush. You know, the Bible has told you and I that we're going to be going, we're going back to be with the Lord. And when, when, when the Lord come back for his bride, the church, and those who have given their lives to Jesus Christ, they're going to go back and be with him. But it says tribulation time is coming, and, and God has some witnesses that's still going to be lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm glad that we got down to verse number 9. Because it says that, you know, in verse number 9, it says, And after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all the nations and kindreds and people and tongues before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. See, some folk are stuck on 144. 
Uh, see, last time I checked, you know, uh, I was in I was in grade school, and and when we was doing our multiplication, you know, twelve times twelve is is a hundred and forty. I I know I can't count, but 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 what I'm trying to say is is that the Bible is teaching you and I that 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 when we get to glory, there's gonna be a number over there that could nobody number. Do you know what a number is? See, number, numbers are, 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 are expressions. When I was growing up, Trustee Gibson, my mother would sometimes say, son, act your age, not your shoe size. So that tells me that shoe size had to deal with, with a number. I'm trying to help me this morning. I got great memories of my mother, amen, especially on June 4th. But what I'm trying to say is numbers have been given to us that not only that, it, it talks about sizes and, and dimensions or ages, but it speaks of a God that's not what? That's not counting. I love what John, what, what the Spirit gave to John, you know, you know, even though Jesus was, was that, is being reminded of, 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 of Israel, but when I look at John 3.16, for God so loved the world, you know, that he gave his only begotten son, that, that lets me know that we're going to get beyond 12 times 12. But see, when I look at numbers, we was in 1 Peter, 2 Peter 3, a few weeks ago. We even heard it last week. In our Sunday school lesson, as it talks about a thousand years is as one day unto the Lord and one day as a thousand years. Just because these things have not happened, that does not mean that they're not going to happen. Uh, Peter, he explained what it meant by that thousand years and one day and one day as a thousand years. In God's economy, God is going to do what God desires to do when God get ready. So who's counting? Are you counting? See, every now and then, my wife gets at me when it comes to the checkbook. She said, well, you learn to count. But I'm, I tell her, I'm like God, who's counting? But my point is, is that when we're dealing with numbers, we are looking for something. But what we ought to be looking at is, is what, what the psalmist said over there in Psalm 90. It says, Lord, teach us to number our days. Because our days are numbered. And when God come back to get us, we ought not be mindful of what time it is. Did you wake up this morning and before you got up, you look at the clock? What did we see? We saw numbers. But God does not want us to be concerned about the numbers, but be concerned about the one in who holds the numbers. And as I go to my seat this morning, a number is something, as we said, that describes not only dimension, size, and shapes, we have come to know that numbers, we have come to know that numbers give us the days of the month. I think there's 30 in this month. 31 in some, and depending on what year it is, it might be 28 or 29, but who's counting? The Bible is teaching you and I that numbers, you know, no, numbers have, they, 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 you know, that, you know, that the greatest number that I know is one. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, the Father. One God, the Son. One God, the Spirit. These three, yet they are one, one God. But as I take my seat this morning, as we're dealing with numbers, can you count to 10? See, when I was growing up, 
on Saturday, we used to watch cartoons, and they had a little thing that comes out that came on between the cartoons, uh, action, unction, junction, what's your function? Uh, I know y'all probably never heard of that. They had one where you would count on your fingers and toes, and after you finish that, you know, you, you, you stop at 20. What I'm trying to say is, is now don't get caught up in the numbers. Christ is coming back, whether it's on the 1st, the 28th or 29th, the 30th or the 31st, or any day between, in between, don't worry about the number because God says that he's coming back for his church with thy spot or wrinkle. But as I go to my seat, Sister Williams, I love what the angel was doing when, he, when, when it came to that six in that seventh seal. It said that the angel began to speak. Don't come and do your destruction yet because God is still working in the lives of uh, his people. The sealing of the 144,000. And then God is working in the lives of those who, who are not Jews, the Gentiles. What I'm trying to say is, is that, and what Peter said, the reason why Jesus Christ has not come back is because he's waiting on somebody to give their lives unto him. I wish you had been in Sunday school this morning. When Isaiah was being called to go out and tell somebody that Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, uh, you know, the, the lily of the valley, uh, the, bright, the great and you know, the bright and morning, uh, the, help me out, the bright morning, yeah, the morning, yeah somebody know it other than me. But what I'm trying to say is, is that, you know, you know, when we look at this lesson, the Bible says that in the year that King Uzziah died, you know, you know, what I got from that, Brother Williams, is that, you know, God sometimes has to take things out of our lives that we might be able to recognize him. Don't get caught up in the numbers. I know he said three score and ten, you know, but good health and, and strength, it might be four score. But I'm reminded that Solomon, in, in all his great wisdom, he says, why should a person die before they time? But we see the angels is, 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 is telling the, you know, after the sin was brought, he said, hold back, you know, don't come and do your destruction yet because God is still at work. And Peter said, God has not returned because he still wants someone to turn on to him. Now, who's counting? I'm, as I take my seat, Reverend Manley, I hear oftentimes, I hear folks say, I'm glad to be in the number. Have y'all ever heard anybody say that? I'm wondering what number they talking about. Because if we go down to 7-Eleven right now, there are a number of folks standing in the number line. I'm trying to help me up in here this morning, but who's counting? What I'm trying to say is, is God is still at work. And he desires that you and I might come to know and understand that he is indeed at work. And many of us had the testimony. We ought to still have the testimony of the Apostle Paul and Isaiah this morning. Because Isaiah said, you know, after he acknowledged that, 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 uh, that, uh, uh, that God, you know, he acknowledged God and, and God's presence. And he acknowledged the angels, you know, God's messengers and, and, the, and the singing of the hymns that holy, holy, holy. And, you know, after they acknowledged that, you know, you know, now Isaiah, he made a confession. He didn't say how many times that he had said some bad words. He just said that I'm a man of unclean lips. How many words have you and I have said that, that, that does not bring God glory? I know it's been over 144,000. But what I'm trying to say is that God has, has, has given us, you know, the, the, everything, as Peter said, that pertains to life and godliness. And when God is ready to come back, God is going to come back to receive his church. But as I take my seat for the last time this morning, as we're dealing with numbers, don't you know that no one can number those who will stand? 
See, 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 stand, it means to set, it means to make, it means to cause a person to, a things to, to keep or remain in a certain place and in a certain time. Don't you know that we're not going to go anywhere until God take us? But see, this word stand, you know, it refers to remaining, a, a standing and being immovable in a particular place. Uh, I love what Jesus said, you know, as it pertains to salvation. He, he said that if, 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 if we, we, we can stand on this. He said, if you have really truly given your life to me, can't nobody pluck you out of my hand? That's a good place to stand in, in the hand of God. But stand, it means to sustain. It means to be fixed or established without hesitation or wavering. There's a song that we often hear, stand up if you're on the Lord's side. See, if, if we stand, you know, recognizing who Jesus Christ is, you know, you know, the Bible says after done all that we stand, when trials and tribulations come to our life, Paul told that church at Ephesus, after you've done all to stand, stand. Are you standing on the promises of God? That sounds like a hymn in, in the National Baptist hymn book. You know, I'm standing on the promises of God. But look, as I go to my seat this morning, he says in verse 9, After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number. He says of all the nations, kindreds and peoples and tongues, it says they stood before the throne. I saw and I heard in our Sunday school lesson this morning that, that the angels was, you know, they was above God's throne. It, it said two covered their eyes, uh, two covered their feet, and, and two they did fly, you know, and it said they were singing holy, 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 Lord, oh God almighty. I'm trying to help me this morning. But it says that not only that they stood before the throne, and it says before the Lamb of God. It says that they was clothed in their white robe. Have you ever heard that song? I shall, I, I shall wear a crown. Uh, yeah. Soon as my feet strike Zion, I'm going to put on my, my robe in glory. I'm going to shout and tell my story. But it says that they were clothed in their white robe. And it says they had the palms in their hands. When the last time you had a palm in your hand? See, see, uh, Sister Manley, I know you on the on the color guard team, and, and I know that they got the color guard. I know they got the cheerleaders. But what I'm going to say this morning is that I believe the palms was the pom-poms. Uh, I'm trying to help me up in here this morning. I believe they were praising, and they were shaking their pom-poms to the glory of Christ come down. But in verse 11 it says, And all the angels stood around about the throne. We're talking about standing this morning. He said, and about the elders and the four beasts. And it said they fell before the throne on their faces and they worshiped God. Don't you know that we're going to worship God throughout eternity? So why are we trying to deal with time? I know, I know, I'm trying to help me up in here this morning, but the Bible is teaching you and I that no one can number those in whom is going to stand. But as I speed along this morning, not only no one can number those who will stand, no one can number those who will speak. Uh, is anybody speaking for you? Are you speaking on your own accord? See, speaking refers to an individual making expressions, whether it's speech, actions about what they're doing, respectively, to exhort by breaking silence. You notice I didn't say think. Because when we look at what's going on around us, when it comes to upsetting God, we do, we do it in three ways. The things that we think, the things that we say, and the things that we do. But speak is the things in which our actions can show. Speaking is what our lips can portray. But speaking in our lesson, it means to open one's mouth. It means to utter the words that are meaningful and honorable. 
The reason I say that because we're talking about what's going on in the life of God and the life of God's people. Verse 10 says, and crowd with a loud voice, saying, he's speaking now to angels, salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb of God. Are you speaking on behalf of Jesus Christ? Are you speaking on behalf of somebody else? What I'm trying to say here in verse number 12, it says that they're saying amen. It says blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. What I'm trying to say is that when we get over to glory, you know, you know, it's not, it's not going to stop. But why are we not doing it right now? What I'm trying to say is that the Bible is teaching you and I that in the congregation of God, you know, who's counting? Are you trying to count on how many people are that are saved up in here in New Union? See, only God knows who's saved. Are you on the ones online? Are you are you trying to count? Uh, are you trying to decide who's gonna be in heaven? You know, and who's going to the lake of fire? Don't get caught up in the stuff that's going on around us. You better be mindful of being caught up when Jesus comes back to receive his church. But who's counting? See, no one can count the number of those who are gonna stand. No one can count the number of those who will be serving. And i stop by to tell us this morning that uh, I just skipped one. I need to go back. The one that was standing and the one that was speaking. Now, it says no one can number those who will serve. The Bible is teaching you and I in this lesson that, that serve, it refers to ministry. We ought to be ministering one to another. We ought to be praying one for the other. We ought to be praying one with the other. The Bible is saying serve, it means to worship. We ought to be worshiping a living God, a loving God. We ought to be worshiping our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the one who laid down his life and picked it up that you and I might have life. But it says serve, it means to perform some type of sacred service. In other words, the Bible teaches you and I that we ought to love one another. See, don't you know that love is a service? See, 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 God desires that you and I, that we might what? That we might love one another. That will what? That will show us that we love him. He says, how can you say that you love me? He said, the one you see each and every day, you know, you can't stand the ground in which they walk on. And guess what? I created the earth. I recreated the heaven and the earth. And so now you can't stand someone that's walking on something that in which I made. But how can you say you love me and you hate it? And you never seen me and you see them Sunday after Sunday, day after day. The Bible is called you and I that we might serve one another. If we learn how to serve one another, there's a good chance we'll learn how to serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because he says that I came not to be served, but I came to serve. How many folk that we know that they come to church to be served? They don't come to serve. What I'm trying to say is the Bible is teaching you and I that as I go to my seat for the last time, as I look at verse number 15, and who's counting? He says, therefore are they before the throne of God. He didn't serve him day and night in his temple. He sitteth on the throne, uh, uh, shall dwell among them. What the Bible is teaching you and I this morning, that there's going to be a number that's up there in glory that no man can number. I'm trying to help me this morning. I know that God is coming back for the believer. I know he has come back to receive some that where he is right now, that they might be also. But God is coming back to us and you and I and to the presence of God that we might want. If, 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 we, if, we, if we go before he comes back, you know, to usher everybody in, the Bible is teaching you and I that God is no respecter of person. Until he comes back, we ought to be serving him by serving one another. Uh, is now how many you serve? 
serve is just who you serve. He said, if you, serve, he said you, if you have done it at least to one of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. The Bible is teaching you and I, as long as we got life in our bodies, as long as we have breath in our bodies, we ought to stop counting and start serving a living God. Because the Bible says that, that one day he's coming back to get us. And the Bible is saying that you, when we get there, it's going to be holy, holy, holy to the Prince of Peace. Uh, I'm trying to help me up in here. It's just not on Sundays. It's not just on Wednesday night. But it's going to say throughout eternity. Eternity, it means forever. And, uh, I know you've heard that song. Is that This is just a rehearsal. When I get to heaven, I'm going to really sing. We ought to be singing to the what? To the glory of God each and every day because the Bible has called us to know and understand that we serve a great God. We serve a, a God who, who has all power and authority in his hand. And, and he says that who's on the Lord's side? Now, the Bible is teaching you and I, if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, don't you know you have been engrafted into the family of God? And all we have to do is continue to serve him. We serve a God this morning. He's sitting high, but he's looking down low. But I want I, I got some news for you. You know, don't you know that the God in whom we serve, he has placed his spirit on the inside of us who yearn to praise him. It's not about, you know, who we praise, you know, who, who we're looking at, but we're looking unto God, the author and the finisher of our faith. I'm trying to help me up in here this morning. See, we got folk who are kicking people to the wayside. Yeah. They, they, we got people thinking of, of who ought to be saved and, and who ought not to be saved. But the Bible is saying God has called each and every individual that has given their life to God that they might stand. That they might stand in this evil day. If you're standing for Christ, you're standing for the right reason. The Bible is teaching you and I that not only that we ought to be standing in this evil day, it says that we ought to be speaking. I don't know about you, but I have someone that I can talk about. Yeah, I'm not, It's not me. It's Jesus Christ. And the Bible is saying that while we are yet here, we ought to be standing. We ought to be speaking. And Lord help, we ought to be serving. Because the Bible says that no man can number those who speak it, those who stand it, those who serve it. And don't you know when we get the glory, there's no man can number. How many up there going to be singing and shouting? Do you love to sing? Do you love to shout? The Bible is teaching you and I, we serve a God. Don't want us to get caught up in the day that he's coming back. The Bible said, be ye ready when he do. Don't let him catch you with your works undone. The Bible this morning is teaching you and I that we serve a God. It's calling us to stand. There's a lot of things we need to stand up for during these evil days. He wants us to speak. There's a lot of things that we need to be speaking against these evil days. The Bible says that when it all said and done, we came to serve the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't get caught up in the numbers. Because I'm looking at the clock right now. Somebody said, won't he shut up? So we can get out of here. The point of it is, Might be someone. Oh. Someone like Isaiah to acknowledge God's work. Acknowledge his spiritual. And after his cleansing, after his purging, the question was who will go for? Here am I. Send me. God has called you and I. We might go. We pray that you would pray for the New Union Church as we are stepping out and doing what God has called each and every one of us to do. To go out and tell somebody that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the only begotten Son of the Father. And the Bible says, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Because Jesus Christ, he came not to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. You can't say 3, 16, and 17 without 18. 
It says those who have, those who believe rather, are not condemned. But those who fail to or those who haven't are condemned already. The Bible says, draw Paul to the church at Rome. We confess with our mouth, believe within our heart, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Contact us here at New Union BC. That old RG. The Bible teaches you and I that we ought to be standing, we ought to be speaking, we ought to be serving. We pray that we will continue to walk, witness, and worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Until then, the next time, stop counting, start serving, start witnessing, speaking, and start standing for the word of God. God bless you. May heaven continue to smile on you.